Welcome everybody to our Halloween special with actor Tom Matthews. If you guys like our content and you want to help support us in getting some more awesome interviews, go check out our paid sponsor Cocolero and get 10% off select bottles before Halloween. It's one of the best selling liqueurs of all time and they have some awesome products. And don't forget to use our coupon code PORTAL10, P-O-R-T-A-L-1-0 at checkout. Go check them out at shopcocolero.com and enjoy the interview. Don't do everything. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess you can, you can start, huh? <laughs> All right. Um, welcome back, everyone. My name's Jen. I play news reporter August Potts on the scripted podcast series for Portalville. Uh, I'm John. I write and produce the show, and I also star as Jack Redshirt, Detective Jack Redshirt, on the new season two series. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. And I got to give a shout out to our uh, paid sponsor, Cocolero. Uh, you can get 10% off with our awesome coupon code PORTAL10 at checkout. It's an awesome liqueur. It's the best selling liqueur of all time in Japan. <laughs> They got a cool Resident Evil bottle and package right now you can get, so. Yeah, if it's not sold out. But Jack Redshirt on the podcast, <laughs> he is from the 80s. He's from the 1980s. So it's really relevant to all of the horror movies from the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you may know our special guest from horror classics like Return of the Living Dead, one and two, um, Tommy Jarvis in Friday the 13th, part six, um, Jason Lives, and some upcoming flicks, uh, Never Hike Alone came out, and now Never Hike Alone 2, um, which we'll chat about later. So welcome, Mr. Tom Matthews. Good to be here. <laughs> and I wanna, I wanna get into, okay, so Return of the Living Dead, it's, one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. Okay. And before we get into it, I want to read some fun facts that I found on the Google machine. Well, make sure you pause oh. between oh. each fun fact though, in case Tom wants to, to interject his own experience. Yeah, I mean, you know the internet, it might, it <laughs> might not always be true, but okay. So <clears throat> I read this. Well, I'll let you know. <laughs> I may not even know the fun fact. So apparently the Simpsons creator, Matt Groening, created the slogan for the poster, they're back from the dead and ready to party. Huh. I don't know if anybody knew that. I did not know that till- I did not know that. That's I think awesome. that's a lie. <laughs> he didn't know, it's <laughs> debunked. Debunked, okay. I also read the zombie extras ate real brains in some of the scenes. Calf brains. Well, I, speaking of the Simpsons, I think uh, my character is in one of the Simpsons yep. movies. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, I remember you do, and you do video game characters too. Ah, yeah. Sorry, sorry to. Oh, I lost you. No, that's cool. Oh, that'd be awesome to be immortalized in I know. a Simpsons episode forever. <laughs> also, Wait, did you mention the brains thing? I just did. Oh, did you yourself <laughs> witness anyone eating brains on the set? Apparently, they uh, ate real brains. Well, I did see. Well, I saw the. Uh, can you guys see me? Yeah. yeah. Huh. I can't see you. Because um, <laughs> I got a call. I don't know. Um, I saw the, uh, not what the proper term is nowadays, for the guy, the short guy who was eating the brains and they closed the ambulance door. So he was eating brains. And I also oh saw, <laughs> to my much chagrin in part two, James Karen had to eat some brains. So that was uh, very, oh very upsetting to me. <laughs> I, j I just watched that last night again. Yeah. Yeah. And I do remember him doing that. I was wondering if they used like calf brains in that one too. I don't remember. <laughs> Didn't you guys eat that for lunch or something? The whole crew eat calf <laughs> brains? <laughs> they could have. All right. Here's another fun fact. And this is awesome. Okay. So Return of the Living Dead, it beat out George Romero's Day of the Dead that same year in the box office. That guy's Didn't like the what? king of zombies, man. And you guys beat it. <laughs> That's cool. He's like, yeh, I know. <laughs> I'm trying to find well, yeah, I know. Oh yeah, obviously. 
Uh, this was also the first time that fast zombies were used in a film. Yes, I did know that. True, this one's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I got two more. Famed director Toby Hooper was supposed to direct and he turned it down because he's working on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, he, he, directed. he had a conflict for Return of the Living Dead. Um, I, uh, I auditioned and read with, for uh, Freddy um, and that was at a callback. And then uh, um, it went away, it disappeared for nine months. I get a callback. So they had some legal issues with the title, with the, with the name. Of it. So while they were doing that, he was scheduled to direct it initially. Then he got hung up nine months later. He had, some, he had, another, he had another commitment. So he ended up not doing it. Yeah. And Dan stepped in, Dan O'Bannon stepped in yeah. to direct his script. And I also read Dan, my last thing that leads me into this, Dan O'Bannon, the director, apparently wanted to be uh, Frank character Frank and they ended up casting James Karen. James Karen. Yeah. That's a fun fact for you. Could have been changed, but James Karen did an awesome job and that role is like Yeah, he so, did. Yeah. So much fun. We got very close. Oh we we uh, found out on the on the second one that we both were born on the same day. What? Yeah. So maybe <laughs> maybe that's why we got along so well. Yeah. We celebrate our birthdays every year after that too. So Oh, you still do too? 35. Well, he passed about four years ago, but we did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Dang. wow. That's a good tradition to have. It was. Yeah. Did you have any um, similar sort of like trivia or, or strange facts that you uh, uh, experienced or know of from the movies? Uh, trivia or... Miguel Nunez was uh, homeless. He was sleeping in his car. Oh. Um, that's widely known. I'm not saying anything. Um, I'm still trying to get you guys. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, I you're having the same you issue. You're back. Uh, so there's there's that. Um, and he's doing fine now, Miguel. He's doing quite well. Um, and then another fun fact. Um. Can't think of anything. Off the top of my head. <laughs> well, you know, you brought up. I was going to actually ask um, James Karen. You said you guys got close. Like, what was it like working with him? Yeah, it was amazing. I, you know, I was a young actor. It was my second movie. The first one I had a, a bit part in the Woman in Red, the movie Gene Waller directed. Um, but yeah, it, you know, most of my scenes were with were with Jimmy, and uh, so just the stories. All his stories were great. Uh, sitting in the makeup chair together. And, you know, he's a Broadway actor, New York actor. Um, one of his best friends was, uh, uh, what's his name? Jason Warbart. He came to the set a couple of times. He told me a couple of stories about uh, when he was, uh, he, he went to go see uh, Jason's play and uh, um, the JFK went there to see Marilyn Monroe in it. And so he was rubbing elbows with all these people. Wow. So he was a great guy. I would hire him as a producer just to, because he was so infectious around the set, you know, just a positive energy and love being there. And, you know, it was great. Cool. Great memories. Yeah. Awesome. You want me to ask the next one? Okay. Yeah. Uh... Let's see. Uh, I'm skipping a bunch of these because we've already asked them. <laughs> Do you My have any uh, funny or weird or creepy stories from the set? Um, working with C.G. Graham as Jason or any fun fact that viewers don't know of? Like if there was- Yeah, C.J. kind of kept to himself. So we didn't really uh, intermingle that much. I see, him a, I see him a lot more now at the horror conventions. I just saw him last weekend at one. And um, it's always great to see any, anybody from the cast at the conventions. It's fun It's fun doing them. It's fun meeting the fans. But uh, Friday the 13th related uh, fun fact, we were sitting around in between 
uh, shoots, where they're removing the cameras to a different uh, setup and stuff like that. And this uh, 12 year old kid came up to me and goes, he's like looking around. He goes, is Jason around? I said, ah, I think he's, uh, you know, having something to eat or getting makeup done or changing or something. Can I help you with something? And he goes, yeah. Uh, can you give him a message for me? I said, sure. He goes, can you ask him if I leave my window open tonight, will he come in and kill me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> your, your responses were completely opposite of each other. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> That's a brave kid. Because if I was scared someone was going to come kill me, I wouldn't just go right up. Then you were horrified. Don, you were laughing. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. So <laughs> there was that. <laughs> and, and what was your answer? Uh, I told him I'd be sure to tell him. And <laughs> time to go on now. <laughs> we're all trying to work. Uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that was an oddity for sure. <laughs> wow. So what, okay. Here's another weird thing. So was that lake scene, was that filmed in someone's pool? The like, underwater that stuff was, oh, yeah. It's two pools, two different that. pools. One where I'm <laughs> fighting with Jason and or CJ. And, uh, uh, that was at a pool in the city of industry, which is in California. And then Tom McLaughlin's father donated his smaller pool to uh, get it all muddy and murky for some of the insert shots for CJ. Yeah, I thought I had read that they got the, the pool all muddy and like it ruined. The yeah, that was uh, Tom's dad, the director's father, his pool. <laughs> because the pool where we shot the underwater stuff, it was probably six people underwater. At one point, Jason, I mean, CJ and I, and then both of the guys who were giving us oxygen, the cameraman and the cameraman's assistant. So that was at least six people were under the water. And it was a bigger pool. It was an Olympic sized pool. Oh, okay. wow. Dang. Amazing. Yeah, you can't even tell. That's cool. <laughs> That's so, <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> um, so you're coming back as Tommy Jarvis and Never Hike Alone 2, the sequel. Uh -huh. We are. Um, We've already shot the uh, the teaser, which is actually going to be the beginning of the movie. Um, we just shot that a couple of weeks ago in Portland. That's going to drop January, Friday, January 13th. Ooh, Friday the 13th, huh? Next yes. year. Yeah. That's cool. That's so cool. And then we'll do the principal photography uh, probably in the summer, August, September, some, something like that. That's cool. Vinny's, Vinny, we bring back Vinny Gustaferro as well as the, he's now the sheriff yeah. uh, of Wessex County. So we'll get to see more of him. He was also in Never Hike in the Snow, which was the prequel to Never Hike Alone. Yeah. Yeah. I know fans were super excited to see your cameo in the first one. Yeah. It went over really, <laughs> really well. 2.7 million views on YouTube so yeah. far. That's good. Yeah. Climbing, yeah. So was it like, how nostalgic was it? Like, what like what kind of details can you tell us? Do you like get to fight Jason again? I mean in part two? Never I can yeah, yeah. Uh yes. Yes. Several fights. Yeah. Oh. Vinny fights him. Vinny Gustafero fights him. Nice. And he believes he, he now sees him for the first time because he's never seen him. Yeah. Before. He didn't see him in Jason Lives. They all thought it was Tommy Jarvis's mental issues and he was the one killing everybody same for never hike in the snow so in never hike alone too uh he actually uh, uh realizes that all these years uh, tommy was telling the truth what an idiot he's been and he's got something some big plans for jason to take care of him. nice so you said you were hiking in hawaii did you uh was that before or after Never Hike Alone? That was before. <laughs> yeah, just before. So you were just pleasantly hiking along. No worries yet. <laughs> You're right. And I wasn't alone. I was That's with true. My son. That's true. <laughs> Never hike alone. Yeah. Never hike alone. He knows the rule, okay? That's right. <laughs> and um, 
So fans were super excited to see your cameo in Never Hike Alone too, because it's been such a long time and then you've reprised, you know, this iconic character. So, um, so during that time off, you know, from the screen, it looks like you were busy doing your construction business. Is that right? Doing that, raising my kids. I've got three oh. children. Yeah. They're all growing up now. The youngest one's 18. She's in New York going to NYU. Nice. Oh, wow. All grown up. They're all grown up. Yeah. We have a couple. They're seven and five. Oh, good age. Good ages. Yeah. Yesterday they were born. I don't know. Yeah. So it goes by like that. You know? <laughs> it does fly by. It does fly by. Stop at two. Yeah. Because if you have three, it just, the chaos will rain in the house. If you have three, you might as well have five. <laughs> one, one, if you only have one, you're it. So you can spend all your time. Two, you can put the two and they can keep each other busy and play and fight and, you know, do the sibling thing. Three, yeah. synergy in the house is just like explodes. <laughs> Not by three times, but like 10 times. It's just crazy. Are your three all really close together too? Uh, yeah, two years apart, every one of them. Wow. Yep. That 18, 20, and 22. Wow. I have to think about it because it changes every year. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about Never Hike Alone. Oh, the construction company. Yeah. So I was looking it up because I'm like, oh, he's had such a big gap. You know, maybe it was like the family or like the construction. Yeah, company. that kind of that kind of took off too. Yeah. Yeah. And and we saw that you had done some renovations for Ozzy Osbourne. Yep. Wow. Had, 18, had 18 employees at one point so we were yeah a lot of a lot of people uh mark Wahlberg, um a uh, bunch of people bunch of celebrities wow that's cool Gary man. old man dang his house uh who else bunch of people oh. yeah high-end stuff nice co commercial custom we cast kelly's uh, uh sharon's daughter kelly's fists in bronze and made in the front door hinges. What? Yeah, that whole job was 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 very creative like that. Yeah, that was about 20 grand just at the time for those. It was six, three on each doors, the double doors. Dang. Yeah, very creative. She brought over some uh, some chandeliers, crystal chandeliers in shapes of boats. And she goes, Tom, because she has an English accent. Tom, where should we put these? I said, Sharon, give me a second. So upstairs, I was walking around the next couple of days, and there's this long hallway. The bedrooms are either side closets and stuff. I said, Sharon, come here. I said, Sharon, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, like they're going down the river. So that's what we ended up doing. Wow. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> Very good stuff. Oh, yeah, man. I'd say you know we have some stuff we need to fix. We like need a, a new back deck. Really low, but you might be out of yeah. price range though. Really low price range <laughs> for us though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not. Depends on the size of the deck, you know. We did it. We built a oh, Luc Besson. We did a. He's a direct, French director. We did a whole three thousand square foot deck in the back of his place. He's a really cool guy. Wow. Dang. You know Luc Luc Besson. His work. Uh, it, bunch. it rings a bell. His yeah. name sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, oh, you can go. <laughs> Don't I'll, interrupt Tom. I was gonna say, how was it working for for Ozzy? Ozzy was cool. He was uh, uh, he was there a lot. You know, we were we were there. If you look at the first episode of the Osbournes. Um, how they shot it, we were there for three months while they were shooting because our schedule went over because they kept adding stuff. They, they, did, they weren't going to move into the house and at the last hour they decided they wanted to move in the house so everything had to come out. Uh, all the drywall was out. We were getting ready to paint because we had another two weeks to be out of the house and Sharon decided they wanted to live in the house. Um, they were just bought to, to turn around and sell it but they had a they had a bad they had a bad experience with a prior contractor and then they called my they got a, 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 a 
a project manager and they hired my company to fill in the blanks. The contract was for four months, three and a half months into it. Sharon decides she wants to move into the house. So everything had to come out. So normally on a normal job, you'll have a contract and everything will be spelled out and you have your plans and, and stuff like that. And that's how you give them a, a price. Uh, and then you'll have some change orders, whatever changes while you're working on the project, don't be five or 10, maybe, and that's a lot. We had 458, 458 change orders <laughs> that contract. Wow. So um, consequently, um, they had a contract with uh, MTV to, to shoot the Osbournes and we were still there for three months while they were filming it. And how MTV did it, they put cameras everywhere, all through the house. It was unscripted and they shot everything for six months. So if you go back and look at the first season, um, there'll be a close up of, of Sharon uh, saying something to Ozzy. And then it'll, it'll go back to Sharon and the, the wall will be a different color over there. There'll be furniture <laughs> or something. Because what they did within that six months, and they were talking about the dog or whatever, whatever the episode was about, the 22 minute episode, they would take the dialogue from here and here and here and make a make an episode. So it made sense because it was unscripted. So that's how they made an episode. And so consequently the first season, the furnishings might be different, although it's in the same scene. So if you look at that, I think it's the first reality, the first, reality tv show too was the, uh, was the osborns dang wow. that's and a that, strange that's so fact cool. i guess should go back and like Did look they, at some of that stuff yeah play stuff around yeah i wonder how, like how often they actually do that in oh, reality yeah. shows that we just don't know <laughs> well i've seen like the bachelorette they'll propose like five times until they get it right you know and every time they're like <laughs> oh my gosh you know that's surprise <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool so what do you enjoy uh, more? Or maybe they're completely different, acting or construction business? Uh, both, I mean, they're both, well, the way I do it, it's, it's very creative. It's, you know, I, I I never could see myself in an office going to do an office job and, and doing that. So it's good for me to be outside and, you know, to go into different, every, every day is different, you know, and it, it's fun, it's creative and, uh, much like acting, I mean, a lot of it's technical, um, but the part I love about acting is when you get lost in the scene and I can always look at a movie and go, oh, that's the audition scene because it's got some meat and potatoes to it, you know? Okay. You, can get, you can get into the scene a little bit. And there's always two or three in a movie. Most of the time it's, you know, handing the keys off just to move the story along or driving or whatever, or there's little scenes, but when you can actually get lost in the emotion of it and stuff, it's... Uh, Really, a lot of fun. That's why like I do. Two different worlds. That's yeah. So cool. Yeah. They're both art, though. Very, uh, very tech. There's a lot, very technical uh, film acting. Very. There's a lot of technicality. You don't want to upstage yourself. I just did a movie um, a couple of months ago, and this there's a young actor there, and so if you're the camera, and he's like this, <laughs> talking, and I say, no, turn your shoulder like this, and make sure your eye can see the thing. So because this way you're not upstaging yourself. This way you're upstaging yourself. Nobody can see you. So there's all those little tricks to, that you learn, you know. I think I would be like extremely intimidated if I could just see cameras out of my periphery, and like a whole <laughs> team standing well, there. You just lock into the other actor and you know, yeah. almost everything else kind of dis disappears. So honestly. you come into the sets and you're like, mm, I could have built this better. <laughs> No, um, that's other. I don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let's see. Okay, so you have new projects coming up. I saw like four of them, but I couldn't watch them yet. Uh, one of them is Final Summer, and uh -huh. Never Final Hike Alone Two is in January. You said, and then well, the teaser is yeah, yeah. And then we'll shoot the main, the bulk of it in August, I guess. And then uh, go away. I yeah. just, I just said, I just saw Dave Kerr. He's the writer director, and uh, he's editing it right now. So that should be interesting. That's very um, Friday the Thirteenth as Camp Silver Lake instead of Camp Crystal Lake. You know, and kids are dying and having sex. And, yeah. 
Fine. It's right up your alley, though. You got experience. I yeah. assume you're surviving then. It's the formula. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So for uh, for the go away, when when is that one coming out? Is that in October? That one we're hoping. Um, uh, that one we're hoping would, would come out soon too. Uh, actually, uh, Dave did that one, not go away. Um, uh, another guy did uh, Final Summer, John I Eisenberg, Eisenberg. Um, and that's that should be out before go away. He's submitting those to the festivals and stuff. Oh, okay. The go away is still being edited, which is a great script. It's a lot of fun great uh felissa rose is in it and tuesday night she and i are married felissa's uh my uh, sister-in-law my loud mouth sister-in-law and uh a lot of family stuff uh and killers and <laughs> it's a very cool script yeah. and then I, I did a western about a couple of years ago three years ago i had my first on-screen song which was I was terrified. I tried to. You sang. I tried, you sang a song. I, I right now on, you're doing it right now too. <laughs> my first on on screen song. I tried not. To, I tried to talk him out of, of letting me sing. I, <laughs> I said, "Look, man, I'm not a singer. You don't want me singing in your movie." He goes, "No, no, it's very, uh, it's very important to the character." Okay. So, and then my my schedule overlapped with another another film I was doing. So I tried to get out of it. Because of the song, he goes, "No, no, we'll push everything." I said, "Are you okay?" So I left on a Saturday night, um, finished on a Saturday night, flew on Sunday, and started uh, filming the western on Monday. Went to roller drop, and of course, the song was the first thing, the first scene that he, he did. He didn't even let me ease into it, you know. <laughs> but well, it did they have very, like a coach or something, or they were yeah, just like, "You're gonna no, sing it's the song." A, it's, it's a folk song. You know, and I realized that after, uh, and uh, uh, it's a folk song. So it's like a campfire song and that they sing around the campfires and stuff. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey. So um, it turned out real well. I'm not going to sing it for it. I don't even remember. <laughs> Darn not, it. Uh, You're going to have to go watch the movie, The West Coast. Yeah. Warpath is the name of that movie. Okay. Warpath. Yeah, because I was gonna. I'm like, you're walking into this, man. You're hitting. You sang a song. So we gotta you ask have to you. find the song and watch it. <clears throat> I want to ask a question. Sure. Just to put you on the spot, not in a bad way, but if you look back at your career and you've been in some awesome movies, what is the favorite scene that you've done? Your most favorite scene that I've done yeah. um, with anyone that I've done. In any movie? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, my favorite. Oh my God, I don't know. Hard to say. There's been a lot, you know. Twenty-five movies, thirty movies, whatever it is. Worked with George C. Scott on uh, Mr. President. That was that was interesting. Um, yeah, I like I love the opening sequence in Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Awesome. Before the credits roll, and then you know any. Working with James Karen and the office stuff was, was really a lot of fun. Simple, but fun. Seems like Return of the Living Dead. Like, was that your first horror movie? Yes. Was that like, how intimidating is that when you walk on set and there's like dozens and dozens of people dressed up as rotting corpses? Yeah, well, you know, when they're sitting around eating, you know, they're not always zombies. So, you know, making a movie is like a big puzzle. So, uh, they're not always zombies. They're actually people. <laughs> what? But they're eating brains. Yeah. <laughs> um, eating sandwiches for lunch, chilling. My favorite scene in uh, Return of the Living Dead is the, the half corpse when they got her and they're talking to her on the gurney and her spine's going back and forth and it's oozing up from spinal fluid. You know, why do you eat people? Not people. Brains. <laughs> Stops the pain of dying. So that was kind of mind blowing to have that conversation and to figure out they wanted the brains. Yeah. And that's a great scene. That's they, a really epic scene. Yeah. I think everyone in the planet knows that one if they're a scary movie fan. Mm -hmm. I mean, my five year old hasn't seen any zombie movies, but he's. Oh, no, good. I, I, I didn't, oh, yeah. It's part of pop culture now because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's everywhere. 
brains. If you think a zombie is eating brains, it's because of uh, Return of the Living Dead, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Which made it part of pop culture because it crossed over in so many different mediums. TV shows and other movies and yeah. cartoons and oh, you know. video games, Plants vs Zombies. I think that's where you got it from. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. brains. Yeah, for sure. That's what started. It was Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. yeah. Back to where it started. Well, do you have any more questions? Oh, you you want to? Oh, I can ask this one. So you do a lot of cons. Um, yeah. Do you have any upcoming uh, dates where fans can come meet you? I have, I'm doing five in October. So October's coming up. Um, the next one I'm doing this weekend is Crypticon. That's in uh, Minneapolis. And that's this weekend, September 16th to 18th. Um, Horrorama, that's in Toronto, Canada. Uh, and then Wikikilla in Manchester, New Hampshire. Scarefest in Lexington, Kentucky. Frightmare at the Falls, October 28th to 29th in Toronto, Canada. And I leave there for Sunday and do a Retro Rebel Fest in San Antonio, Texas. And then I'm already booking stuff in, uh, for next year already. So wow, it's you're fun. busy. Fun to meet the fans and, uh, you know, keep it going. And we'll, I think at Wicca, we're going to do uh, Vincent uh, DeSante's there too. So we're going to screen never hike in the snow and uh, the ghost cut so i try to get those in if some of the other movies that i we talked about are finished and try and get those to be screened there as well because a lot of them do different things a lot of them will costume contests and and uh, film festivals and and uh, you know all, all, all different kinds of things you know it's fun people dress up and kids dress up and, you know, it's fun do you all do all the actors hang out and party afterwards? <laughs> uh, sometimes, yeah. I just met. I just hung out with Letterface and uh, nice. Uh, who else? Who else was there? I saw Debbie Foreman, the one prior to this. Where I have a the Valley Girl. She's yeah. the Valley Girl. Yeah. Um, and we used to run around together when we were young actors. And I haven't seen her in like twenty five years. So it was. <laughs> Fun to see her. Um, I see a lot of actors that were I was in acting class with, you know, at these things. So it's fun. Um, awesome. That's yeah. cool. Fun. Well, well, uh, that's all the questions we have. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, or any any questions for us, or anything? No, just uh, keep keep doing what you're doing. Plug so, your brand or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Uh, if people can't get to the uh, conventions for whatever reason, I do have a website. I call it my horror picture table. And so it's all my photos of my pictures that I have available at the horror convention. That's just tommatthews.com. And it'll come right up and they can see all my stuff, whatever. But that's about it. Cool. We'll link that yeah. on, uh, on our portalville.com website. We'll have a page uh, dedicated for you. We'll have your link on there too. Cool. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you very much. So right. everyone uh, go check out all of Tom's classic roles. And uh, I mean, again, we've all seen it, but like <laughs> see him again. And then um, the he new still films. Holds up, you know, yeah. Friday, Friday still holds up and uh, yeah. Return of the Living Dead. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It's like lightning in the ball. It should never be remade. It just it can't be touched. Return 2 is okay. It's, it's not, you know, one, it's a different kind of thing completely i think return one is a true dark comedy it's a little funnier and, the second and, time yeah, yeah. A little more campy part, part two is goes goes for more of the jokes so it's more of a comedy comedy yeah, yeah. so <laughs> i mean part one you laugh at the situations we get ourselves into it's not because of anything we're doing but <laughs> what's happening you just can't believe what's going on yeah. cut the guy's head off and him running around <laughs> <laughs> crazy <laughs> yeah part one is I think part two is cool though. It's campy. It's like, haven't we yeah. done this before? Yeah, but it's totally, <laughs> it's totally cool different. Though. Totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Friday the 13th, part six, I think is one of the best in the series too. It's a little mm -hmm. bit different. <clears throat> and your character's awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's a fan favorite. Yeah. And yeah I've exactly. got the video game too. We got the uh, Friday the 13th video game mm -hmm. as well. Which is my uh, my voice is in it for Tommy Jarvis, so that's that's been fun. Which is kind of cool because it's creating a whole new demographic 
the kids, the gamers, they start at seven, eight years old and they're playing the game and becoming fans. And if you're parenting right, your kids shouldn't see the, you know that movie until they're 12 or 13 years old so they don't have nightmares yeah. but you'd be surprised how many people come up to me and say they've they've seen seen it when they were eight or nine years old and i said let me guess was it a babysitter or your cousin or your older brother made you see it or something like that mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that was my first scary movie is my older brother yeah there you go mm -hmm. <laughs> checks out <laughs> yeah cool i mean i snuck into some movies i shouldn't have snuck into when i was a kid i remember sneaking into so we told my parents we we're gonna go see some movie i don't know what it was but me and my friends went to go see candy man uh -huh. so yeah i've done that too it's not always children, your parents and babysitters so. children lying to their parents is that not <laughs> <laughs> well uh thank you so much for your time we really You're appreciate welcome. Uh, thanks for you. having me yeah, we really appreciate you uh, sharing uh, your stories with us and information about all your projects. Yeah, uh, keep an eye out for Go Away and uh, Final Summer, and then we'll we'll talk again. Yes, yeah. definitely. We'll have you yeah. back. Yeah, thank you so much. Good. My pleasure. All right. Thanks. Have a great rest of your night. Bye-bye. You. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Where's the button? It is here. <laughs>